It's Madden NFL 24. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Niners and the Birds, and it's coming up next. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here as it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. Brandon Gaunt and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles, quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. Here's the kicker, Jake Elliott, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. And we will not get a run back here to start. It's a touchback, and it will come out to the 25. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. Leading them out, someone who took the league by storm last year is the most famous Mr. Irrelevant ever. From Iowa State, it's Brock Purdy. And you'd think as a young QB, there'd be some nerves leading an offense out to start a game, but haven't seen any sign of them right now. And speaking with him earlier this week, sense that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He feels comfortable being the face of this offense and shouldering the expectations on game day, even if he doesn't quite have the years of experience other quarterbacks do. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. And throwing here, Purdy. And that'll be incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Other than come through on this play and get the series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. Here's Purdy. Now a diving effort right sideline. He's got it. 15 for the Niners there and a first down. He may go back to the home and have a little discussion with his passer. You know, maybe you don't have to leave me quite that much. <laughs> but on that play, bailed him out in a big way, didn't he? He did indeed. Hey, at least he gets to put it on the highlight reel. carry for Christian McCaffrey and he gets forward up the middle but only for a couple it'll be second down <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying my bad we simply couldn't move him off the line of scrimmage we've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there second down and right back to McCaffrey Gets by him and now a little daylight. And three yards there takes him to the 45. And we're going to stop play here at least momentarily. It looks like there is a 49er who's in some discomfort. The medical staff will attend to him and we will step aside. Third and five.
Purdy. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he has another first down, and so get the ball down to the Eagles 39. That one good for 16 as the drive continues. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball, and sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. A little bit of daylight on that first down run sets him up nicely. Eight yards on the carry. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Purdy now on second down. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And Kittle going to have a 49ers first down as he'll get this down to the 23. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. Now it's second and ten. Back to the ground attack here. It's McCaffrey. And they're knocking on the door now. There's a good run there. Going to take this to about the 10-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. The impressive opening drive continues and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing an offensive line as this game gets started, as it starts to unfold, that they are dominating the line of scrimmage. Purdy to throw it on first down. Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. Picked up by James Bradbury. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Eagles defense gets a pick six TD. So just a tremendous play there defensively on this opening drive. Not just to make the interception, but to take it all the way home. And it felt like this was a defense that was on its heels a bit to start this thing off. Yeah, they pretty much let the other guys march right down the field until that moment. Yeah, key play there. Turned it all around. Big moment. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. He's got it, and the Eagles lead it 7-2. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. the 20 to the 21 yard line back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive now remember they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around yeah, and sometimes partner i think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field you're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long you're not hearing everyone say oh, hey you'll get them next time hey don't worry about it all that stuff just goes right out the window you're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. Fresh off that pick six, here's Purdy. And he bats it away, and it 
falls down incomplete. Well, I guess that answers the question whether or not they want him throwing it again right away after throwing the pick six on the previous drive. Yeah, not something conservative or underneath. Pretty big shot right there. Get him right back in the saddle and said, go ahead and sling it, big guy. Second and ten. Purdy from the gun. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. 11 yards for number 11. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere, and they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people, but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. A handoff, McCaffrey running right, and they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Throwing on second down, it's Purdy. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. But following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, is going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Here is third down and four. Purdy looking to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to have a Niners first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. Oftentimes we think of those tough yards as grinding yards that a running back has to pick up. How about the tight end there picking up the first down in that situation? That's what he's there for, right? Big fella, get it to him. Let him fight off some people and pick up the necessary yardage. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Purdy now to throw. Open man is Juwan Jennings. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. They had yet to run the ball at all on this drive, but third and short definitely was a great time to dial one up. Back to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Hassan Reddick coming through with a stop there and a tackle for loss to boot. As a linebacker, you're taught to stay just slightly behind the ball carrier just in case he makes a cutback. But when you find the gap, shoot it. And he found it all right. Took it straight into the backfield and made the tackle for a loss. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. What do they have for this? Third and 11. 
Birdie will set up to throw it here. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. That set courtesy of the effort of Hassan Reddick. Not the start to this one that any quarterback would want or envision. Remember, he had the pick six, and here he ends up on his backside. And you have to wonder to yourself, okay, after throwing the pick six, did he get too careful with the football and not deliver downfield and take that sack? They've got to make sure that he's really into this game. On fourth down, the Niners trot out Mitch Wisnowski to punt the football. Britton Covey deep for Philadelphia. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Philly's offense getting ready, and Jalen Hurts ready to lead them. The second-round pick who started his career at Alabama then finished with an electric senior season at Oklahoma. Tremendous production in college at two different universities, and this is a guy who was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Still much more of a runner than a thrower, but has plenty of arm and is capable of making the big throws downfield. And don't underestimate his ability to think the game. Remember, he's the son of a coach. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Right back to Swift again on second down. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Philadelphia picking up the first on a gain of 15. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. On second down, Swift. And he'll push forward for a couple to the 34. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Third and eight. They go play action with Hertz. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Charvarius Ward. And he returns it into enemy territory down to the 45-yard line. Uh, certainly not his best throw that time and, and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. First down, this is McCaffrey. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Ball on the 39. Here's second and three. Now Purdy. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball. But he was unable to get away from the defender. Couldn't create space. Couldn't uncover at the end of the route. And that one winds up incomplete. On third down, here's Purdy. 
And that one goes incomplete on the draw. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. There is no denying they want to get him involved. That's already the fifth time that they've looked his way in this first quarter. So that tells me defensively that they want to insist on going in that direction. Make sure you've got your best people in the area to try and take that away. That is caught. And he is going to have a 49ers first down, it would appear. And yes, the chain gang going to move the sticks. They take a risk on fourth and four, but they get it by a full yard. Back to throw, Purdy. Completes it to Jennings. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Ball on the 27. Here's second down and three. McCaffrey running up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter. The Niners on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This will be third and five. Gets this one to use check. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. He'll get a dozen there, and it's a first down, 49ers. Well, let's be honest about the whole thing. When you're looking for a reliable set of hands on third down, the first thought is often not fullback, but that's who they turn to there, and he does a nice job of securing the football and picking up the first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Looking to throw, Purdy. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. And they'll come up second and seven. Operating from the gun, Purdy. The same target, same result. It's Kittle. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. A yard all they need, but it's third down. Shotgun now with Purdy. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And the Niners are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. A second down throw for Purdy. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. They'll look to throw on third and goal. That'll be caught by Ayuk. Touchdown 49ers. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the 49ers are an extra point away from evening this one up. 
And in the red zone, I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster. Without a doubt, if you have him, you use him because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time. I don't care what the coverage is. Jake Moody now for the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it was Brandon Ayuk capping it off with a touchdown reception. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This taken in at the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. So back onto the field. Here come the Eagles for their second drive. They had the interception last drive, led to the tying touchdown. So 7 7 the score as they begin first and 10. Start on the ground with Swift. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Second and eight coming from the 19. Throwing his hurts. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And this one will go to the 28 yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. The defense was ready for the back to leak out, and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling the back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turned it into a successful play. But first down, Hurts. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Looked like both sides were anticipating a quick throw there, and the defense was ready to jump in and deny it, and they did. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Here's Hurts to throw. And that's out to the flat for Swift. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Here's third and nine. Hurts. takes it across the 40-yard line. Hurts dangerous when he runs that football. He's got a first. Evident there that he learned his lesson from the last drive. No way he was going to force a throw that time, but nothing broke open, kept it, and ended up running for a first down himself. A couple of first downs has the football position at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Hurts sets up to throw it. shy of midfield at the 48. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. And a solid job using his legs. 16 yards and a first down on the keeper. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, 
He committed to it and went. Let's face it. Most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. Play action. Here's Hertz. Wide open receiver complete. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. This has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against him a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there. And they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. They're going to look to throw toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line. Second and goal. Swift. A little juke. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Defensively, they must have been expecting a pass. They were in the dime look out there. I think maybe they were deciding to go with speed on the field rather than bulk. I'm with you. A little bit surprising. But they wanted people getting to the ball as fast as possible. The lighter shift your defensive backs allow you that opportunity. Third and goal, option right. And he's in for an Eagles touchdown. Jalen Hurts scoring on a two-yard keeper. And the Eagles have taken the lead. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. Elliott now to add the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Now Brandon Ayuk ready to bring out the rest of this offense here for this upcoming series. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things, more touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. They'll try to ratchet things up then maybe here in the second quarter. Play action, now Purdy. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. Yes, sir. How about an out boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. The throwing here, Purdy. And this is caught, Jennings. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Give running left, it's McCaffrey. 
And a good burst there gets him seven up to midfield. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second and three. Purdy now to throw off the play action. He's got the hookup downfield with Samuel. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 27-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. On first down, Purdy. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the part. One-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield. After the catch, when they're running with the ball, they think they're going to win those two. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter, 14 to seven. Second and six. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. And that's incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far, even backed up late. They're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Purdy. And that one goes incomplete on the drive. That's what he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. He must be very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stuff. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. And Philadelphia's offense ready to go again. A good balance attack for that last touchdown drive they had. Now it's time to see if they can do that again. It really becomes a tale of two play callers, doesn't it? The offensive guy, he's in sync. Everything is working pretty well for the defense. Yeah, what's going on on the defensive That's side? That's a line. tough one because he's prepped all week as well, and he can't get a bead on exactly what they're doing right now. What he needs is one of his guys just to make a big play and disrupt things. On first and ten, it's Hurts. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now, here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. Hurt throw here, take it in as he's able to find Goddard. They get six, that'll leave him with third and four. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? 
Now they'll throw here out of the gun. He delivers another to Goddard complete. And he is going to have an Eagles first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. That's a big conversion there on third down because they did not want to give the ball up here late in the half. They'd love to take the clock all the way down and score. This will definitely help the cause. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Man open left side is Brown. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Towards the end zone for Brown. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they run successful. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. From the gun, it's Hurts. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he is going to have an Eagles first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. stripe they'll look to throw four step and he can't find a receiver and he's brought down the eagles will take their third and final timeout as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one well, this has been a good march down the field but now they're stuck looking at a second and 14 Another try after the first down sack. Hurts. Buying time to his left. Oh, he's brought down. And remember here, no timeouts left. They got to get to the line quick. A good pickup, but it will come on what should be the final play in this first half. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. This has certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle, and we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. So the Eagles with the lead, and they're going to get this football first as the third quarter gets underway. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter.
Roberts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 23. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That's complete to Swift out of the backfield. Short completion, just four yards, and that will bring up second down. They go play action with Hertz. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly. And that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. On third down, he'll drop to throw. This short throw caught by Goddard. And brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle, and the extra effort moves the sticks. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. Well, with his size, you've really got to wrap up because arm tackles, they're not going to cut it. And that time, he used his full-grown man strength to fight off his defender and pick up the first down. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. It's caught on the right side at Smith. They'll give him four yards there at its second down. Now Hurts on the option right, and this winds up a gain of four to the 41. And if you like defensive football, focus on the defensive end on this play. He does everything exactly right. Reads the play and makes sure he spills it for a small gain. Two yards still to go, third down now. Throwing his Hurts. And that is incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force the incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. The Eagles send out their punter now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. This is taken at the 18. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs. But now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for the second half. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. 52 yards rushing for him now to this point. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Purdy bootlegging it. He'll get this complete to Charlie Warner. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. Oh, a lot of credit to the play caller here. He saw the design in his mind and implemented it. A little zone stretcher here because they started the tight end on the left side of the formation and sent him on a crossing route. And this works really well where you can find that space between levels and they were able to do so for good yardage. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 38. Out of the gun, Purdy. Got a man, that's Ayu. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Purdy to throw it on first down. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. 
it's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Here's second and ten. Purdy looking to throw. He'll get this to McCaffrey out of the backfield. Personal foul. Unnecessary run. No! I know it's an emotional game, Charles. You can't do that. And when you get into your film sessions and you argue your case with your coaches, that's exactly what they say at the end. You just can't do it. It costs your team. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. The tight end in motion right. McCaffrey following the penalty. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Now second and five. Snap will come from the six. Off the option, here's McCaffrey. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Now Purdy. That's caught by Debo Samuel. Touchdown, San Francisco. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the 49ers have taken the lead here in this third quarter. So a very strong first drive in this second half, Charles, as they've turned that halftime deficit into a third quarter lead. And they were pretty purposeful there, weren't they? Measured in their approach. But boy, they executed awfully well, moving the ball down the field. Moody good with the extra point, and it's now 17-14. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 26. On first and 10, it's Swift. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Unfortunately for you, you've been around me for a little while now, so you know me as well as anyone and how I look at a game. I don't ever advocate abandoning anything, but in this case, I'm going against my own thought process. You've got to change it up. you got to start throwing it around a little bit, finding ways to try and move the ball, because keeping it on the ground, just isn't working for them. Yeah, maybe get him the ball out of the passing game. A swing pass outside or something, just something to vary it up. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. Here's Hurts to throw. That escapes us. But in the end, the pressure too great, and he goes down. Chase Young able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And that's his second sack in this one. And you just can't ask a defensive end or an edge rusher to play any better than what we're seeing right now. And partner, it's still just the third quarter. I'm thinking he's not done yet. Even if he's not getting a sack, he's bringing a lot of pressure to the pocket. 
And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. The 49ers ready to set up shop again offensively. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Here's Purdy on first and 10. Looking sideline incomplete. Give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Purdy. Stays on his feet. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Purdy with it on third and long. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. On first down, Purdy. Open man is Samuel, complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. The throwing here, Purdy. Steps away to his left. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. On second down, McCaffrey. And he's going to take this close to the first down marker as he stopped at the Eagles' 29. It's a five-yard game, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not everyone's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. On third down, it's Purdy. That is caught. And he's going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. He's able to force his way through one man, but he can muster only about a yard on the play, second down. When a drive goes this long, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, those big fellas, because the offensive line is putting something together that allows them to continue to control the ball. And I know a lot of people think they get fatigued on a long drive. Actually, a lot of times the reverse happens. They actually get energized because they're controlling the ball and they're the ones dictating to the defense. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. 74 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Back to throw, Purdy. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. So 
Two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chipping. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And really, Charles, not much of a surprise that they're losing. They just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game. And as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. Exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now, the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, they've got to find some type of a play, multiple plays, that puts the ball in the air and allow... And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown! Swift, 78 yards. And the Eagles have even the ball game with a chance to take the lead here in the final minute of this third quarter. Well, he's used to running it that distance here. He had to catch it, too, before making the run. Heck of a play for the score. There's not many things better for an offense than a back who is a complete guy who can run it and catch it. And we just saw him complete a big-time play for a touchdown. Elliott on for the extra point. And that one puts them on top here in the third. Those are the kind of drives they like on offense from the coordinator to the quarterback, the line, everybody. One play drive and into the end zone for six. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the 49ers settling in for their next drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them... That's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. He's got this complete to Ayuk on the out route. So just three yards on the completion there. And that's going to bring up second down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. He's got Ayuk once again. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. 
And he'll go out of bounds. It looks like right at the 40. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second down. And they'll go with a ground attack here. Gets past one man. And not much room to operate as they'll get this up only to about the 41. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. On third down, it's Purdy. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a 49ers first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. That's not the first time they've looked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long. And they get the hookup again on third down to keep this drive alive. A couple of first downs on the drive already. As they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The tackle that time by Zach Cunningham. This defense tough to run against. And those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get them for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. 82 yards rushing for him now to this point. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys going to want to run up and tackle him. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I, I like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. They'll run for it. McCaffrey shreds the tackle. And he is going to have the Niners first down as he gets a little more than he needed. Four yards to pick up there on fourth and two. It's a gain of four that time. And it'll be a San Francisco first down. This time they'll throw it. Here's Purdy. Oh, no, he lost the football. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And they take over. They'll set up shot at the 46-yard line. The defense, they were swarming that time and ultimately got to him before he could get rid of the football and knocked it free. And don't you feel just a little bit of sympathy for him back there, though? So much going on, so much swirling around. He's trying to find someone downfield. He's trying to move around to find an open target. Sometimes you forget the number one thing, take care of the football. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. They'll be hoping to work a little clock and try to add on to this slim fourth quarter lead. But whatever happens on this drive, certainly a huge fumble recovery by their defense at this juncture. On first and ten, it's Hurts. Got a man. It's Brown. Super Bowl 51, Atlanta had the lead against New England, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. And they run the option here on first and 10. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. Oh, man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. 
read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. On the option to give to Swift here. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Now Hurts going to keep it running left. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the keeper, and it's going to bring up a third down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so they didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Zacchaeus here hauling it in. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 22-yard line. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. You always worry about those small receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. They run out of the gun with Swift. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It was Eric Armstead coming up quickly and dropping him for a loss. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. 14 yards that time and a first down on the keeper. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone that's the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. That'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. They give him two yards there as they're set up now with a first and goal. Starting to feel a little to me like the air is coming out of the balloon, so to speak, defensively. They're taking their will from them right now. That's what they're doing. Whatever they want to call, it's working. They're handling things up front. And it's not just the offensive line. It's everyone. You're seeing the guys on the perimeter blocking down the field and making sure that they're secure. So, yeah, you're exactly right. The air is out of the balloon. And right now, they're almost lifeless. No gain on the play that time. And it sets up second and goal. They'll run with Swift, and he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. DeAndre Swift with his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Eagles will add to their fourth quarter lead. Sometimes offensive can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here, and we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. Elliott good on the extra point. And that will ensure that it will take a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie it. touchdown here's 
and they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. Still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter and just a one possession game down eight. They'll be looking for the touchdown and two point conversion. A field goal here on this drive does very little at this stage. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 27. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. 94 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Second down and three. Purdy now to throw. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. And that's a much-needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. On first down, it's Purdy. Throw left side, McCaffrey's got it. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it, and it's second down. Two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's 49er football here as we get your reset. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Brandon's okay with what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Throwing. Purdy. The same target, same result. It's Kittle. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time, but guess what? They've got to make sure on their throws that they see it open, not just anticipate it. Now second and four. Here's Purdy. And it's caught by Jennings. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. Now first and goal. Purdy to throw. And he's got it. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. Second and goal from the one. To throw is Purdy. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's going to take full charge of his head. They'll totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. The focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Purdy to throw. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Picked up by Shaquille Leonard, the linebacker. And the Eagles have just about sewn up this football game. So a good drive with a bad ending, Charles. They move it down the field well. Cannot finish it off, though, as it's intercepted in the end zone. 
Deflating, that has got to be the word here because they were sharp in moving it down the field, but sometimes you start thinking like a touchdown is a given, and it doesn't always work out that way as we saw there. Two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Here's a second and five now from the 25. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. formation as they take a knee. And now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Down to a knee goes Hurts, and that is going to be that. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So fly, Eagles, fly. It's a victory for Philadelphia. And they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big time performance down the stretch. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Eagles are winners here as we say so long from Philadelphia.